Okay, um, in the blurb that I originally sent to the Northwest Met group, um, I said that this was a sequel. Last year, how many people were at last year's session? So these are all just one, a couple of people. Last year, uh, the description on this is a whimsical, whimsical look at AV gear or gears and gadgets that are out there. Um, this time, I've got close to 200 slides, so it will move along quite rapidly in an hour. I have a tendency of moving fast. Um, the, the, and the combination is split by different levels of technology. And some of it is hilarious. Some of them say, hey, this might work. Um, the group asked me whether or not we could get a copy of this. I will supply a PowerPoint copy of it, complete with all my notes and the notes I've captured off the websites and whatever. This presentation, its images and all the copies and all the rest of it is totally not copyrighted. I didn't get any copyright permission to do it, so I therefore say that it's not available. So you can do whatever you want, just don't put my name to it. So, uh, and I'm using it for educational purposes. Does that work for us? Yeah, okay. I'm Canadian, by the way. We have different copyright rules than you guys have. So without waiting any longer, I'm with Langare College, Vancouver. And as I say, this is the sequel to last year. If you want last year's presentation, it will be also presented and it'll be labeled as 2010 package. This I found and heard on the radio just the other day. When I'm saying just the other day, it would have been Friday morning. And I quite agree with this. I have a 23-year-old daughter who if her iPhone dies for an hour, forget it. Don't even go anywhere near her until it comes up and running again. Okay, so what we're going to look at are things like time machines. We're going to look at um, a category that I call everyone needs one of these, a category which I call uh, tracking devices, which for all the media specialists and people, managers on the campus and whatever, this makes a whole lot of sense. Um, you've got to be kidding technology, and yes, there's some of it out there. Projectors, LCD units, AV devices, transportation devices, USB drives and hubs, and USB memory. And I think I might have another couple more in there. So without waiting too much longer, we're going to have a look at time machines. Oh, by the way, when I found out what the theme of the uh, conference is, analog to digital, I tried to incorporate some of the analog images into these things also. This is an alarm clock that does and uh, takes you to your YouTube's, your Wi-Fi alarm clock package. A watch, which actually has a LDC, LCD display that you can do some level of surfing on it. Those people, how many people here have got iPhones? And on those iPhones, they've got clocks on them, right? Well, you can now buy a pack or a case that has got a clock built into it. Don't ask me why. I didn't invent all these. These are all available to some degree anyway. A watch that has little lit up and magnified numbers on it to see what time things are. This one I think we saw or I saw as a child and never really saw it operate. Wristwatch uh, walkie talkies. Great little idea. I think they're perfect. I'm not quite sure what for but because we've all got phones and whatever. Some of these actually are in existence and you can buy. Some of them are conceptual, by the way. The next one is a liquid dial wristwatch. I'm not quite sure why anybody would want one of these. If uh, my notes are correct, they were in the $1,000 price range for this particular watch. Sorry? <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't, uh, for that kind of price, I don't even want to uh, try to find out what it is. Next one is a Bluetooth uh, shock watch. You can operate all your Bluetooth devices using this watch. The next one is what they call a revolution or a revolve watch. The numbers revolve around your wrist. I'm not sure if you're supposed to go around, as I say. And it comes in a wooden shaped one or a metallic one. Just before Christmas, my laptop of eight years, Apple, died, and I think this is what I'm going to be doing with it, yeah. converting it to a clock. <laughs> um, 
other than it took me about an hour to get into the memory on it because Apple does a really good job of securing the memory way down inside the machine. Next category is to say everybody needs this and there's a play on word on the, the word needs on this one. The first one is a USB stress ball. You squeeze this guy and the image on your screen actually shrinks down. I think I may have a problem if I do that at work. Uh, the image would constantly be set down that way. This is a new device that's just come on the market, believe it or not, which is called Glux, which used to be called Plaster Scene or um, what was the other one? Uh, Silly. Silly Putty. Why they've changed the name, I'm not quite sure, but the Japanese probably came up with it. The next product I think already exists or it did in my oldest daughter's uh, kit bag, and they're biodegradable sneakers. Somehow along the way, she inherited the continuous smelly socks and shoes and feet. These sneakers actually biodegrade on you. Not sure how long and how fast it happens, but it uh, does have the instruction. How many people here remember the Rubik's Cube? Everybody? Here's one for you. This is a brain <laughs> Rubik's Cube. You think maybe a little complex to do because each one's got its own set. How many people were successful with Rubik's Cube? One? I'll bet you you can't do the next one. This is a 17 by 17 by 17 Rubik's Cube. I apologize for some of the images, they're not all that great. How many people here have children or themselves that take very long showers in the morning? And you miss the morning news? Here is a shower driven radio. So you can listen. Battery, no batteries included, environmentally friendly. What about people who had um, children who used to love to play with boxes that the gifts came in? You can now buy wheels for your box. I'm surprised some people actually got patents for some of these things. What an umbrella, now we never need umbrellas in the Pacific Northwest. An umbrella which automatically will open up in the inside anyway with a flap on top for uh, doing wind stuff. So you don't lose your umbrella as often. How many people here are gamblers? Nobody? Yeah. There's an app for iPhone that you can make it into a uh, jackpot or a slot machine. My wife actually liked this idea. I said no. Um, the next one which I thought was interesting is uh, a wristwatch or wrist sensor that tells you what your mood is. Well, many years ago I bought one of these or I was given one of these. You put your thumb on it and it tells you what your stress level is. This is in a wristwatch device. Not sure how many different devices you have on your arm as you get more technology inv included. The next item is a, um, a unit that, well let me back up for a second. I'm a wood turner working on lathes and that kind of stuff. I just upgraded to a new lathe that's got a three-quarter horsepower motor on it, which is more than anything that I need for my shop and my skills. Here's a shredder that's got a three-quarter horsepower <laughs> motor on it. Don't ask me what you shred that it needs three-quarters of a horsepower motor on it. Sorry? I like the name of speed. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I've not changed the names of the products to protect the innocent. The next one is for those people that are into recycling. How about a salt and pepper shaker out of old batteries? I do hope they've done something more than whatever. One of the, uh, this is an interesting one that's still in the developing stage, the next item, is a electronic beam firefighter. This, apparently they're working on trying to control beams around a fire that can control a fire and actually put it out. So I'm not sure which one of the three triangle items for a fire that it uh, affects but apparently they're working on it, it's a developmental stage, but they're saying it's very promising. The next one is a device that all, now I'm going to be a little sexist, all daughters need. This is a credit card that's got your automatic balance. It actually comes up on the top corner, right here. I'm not sure whose automatic balance that is, it's not mine, I'll tell you that. But um, new concept, which actually has your balance right there on your, on your card. I was in, like a challenge. I mean, yeah, <laughs> see how far it goes before it melts. I was in the unfortunate situation on last weekend, Monday and Tuesday, where three appliances in our house died. 
our fridge died, our stove died, and our dryer died. So I went out and bought some new stuff. My son-in-law made a comment to me about, before you buy a fridge, make sure that, it, that you can stick magnets on it, because he has a fridge that doesn't. Well, I think this is a perfect uh, purpose for your iPad, where you can actually hook up your iPad onto the fridge and make it work as a uh, notice center. Again, back to people who take showers. This is a shower with a built-in um, fish tank. Okay. Did the you next. See through it in both ways? I don't know. I, uh, this is another one of those Japanese products. Like last year, was making toilet paper out of recycled office uh, paper. Not sure about that one. The next device is one that I wasn't sure whether or not I should put into. You've got to be kidding or what? But this one is. How many people play golf here, by the way? Just about everybody. Nobody. No golf players. Sorry. If you do play golf, or if you're unfortunate, if you've ever been hit with a golf ball, it hurts, right? Here's a golf ball launcher. <laughs> Why, I have no idea. Accident waiting to happen, as far as I'm concerned. It's a weapon. Next one is, I think every kitchen needs this one, is a radio toaster. Hot music in the morning. Or you get to listen to the news as it uh, toasts and whatever. Next addition to the toaster end of things is a pop art toaster. Okay, um, my son-in-law actually has one of these. He's a Vancouver Canucks fan. Yay, Vancouver Canucks! And he actually, you can burn in Vancouver Canucks logo on the toast. Uh, he hasn't got this particular model, but one close to it. If you're concerned about burning your toast in the morning, here's a transparent toaster, so you get to see your toast burn. Um, Notice it's only one slice at a time. I'm not sure if they can't figure out how to put two to uh, slices in it or not. The other people that are into doing a lot of kitchen gadgetry stuff and like to sing in the kitchen while they're doing that, a sing-along tong. <laughs> this one comes with complete song lyrics. I'm not sure what lyrics you want to put on it, but it's there. Sorry? <laughs> Share them with me. I, hey, I... Uh, that'll work too. Um, next one is a device that I th think is a little scary personally. It is a clock that has a built-in surveillance camera into it. I'm not sure if my boss should even hear about this one because uh, he may be giving them to our entire division. Next one is on the bit of a zany side is a corkscrew. This looks like, if you look close enough, looks like a bowl of some sort. It comes off. And here's the corkscrew part of it. Bit odd, but yet people buy them. In the same realm of drinking, which I don't do, by the way, um, is you've always got a problem where do you put the caps? Here's a machine or a device that the caps automatically fall into handle. Makes sense to me. Um, saves a whole lot of cleaning up and whatever. The next device comes out of Japan. Japanese technology is really good at coming up with really strange devices. I'm not quite sure why they come up with these ones, but this one is a beer pourer out of a can. There's no mechanics to this thing whatsoever. It's something that attaches to your can. You pour the beer out in, into your glass. Any idea why? Nobody? I have no idea why would one want to do that. I can pour it quite easily on the side without you know, getting the head and whatever. So, The next one is something I think every fraternity house in all of North America, if not Europe and whatever, needs. And this is an automatic, and there's a video attached to this. I'm not going to run it because it takes a little too long. And with my luck, I never believe in doing live stuff on uh, presentations. These fill glasses of beer. And in this particular video, they can fill up 56 glasses of beer in one minute. And it's filled up from the bottom. There's a little a magnetic shutter on the bottom. You put the beer cups down, it opens up, fills up, and moves on. And the video actually shows 56 uh, glasses of beer in less than a minute. As I say, every fr uh, frat house in North America should have one of these. Anybody who got children who love rainbows? Here's a perfect device. Lull them to sleep with a rainbow unit. 
And if you're not into having children or whatever and you want a light show on your lawn, here's a light, uh, water and light show uh, unit for your lawn. Makes sense to me, I think. Anyway, I'm not sure. How am I doing on my numbers? Oh, I should, might be able to make this. Yeah, they do, but this one's a little cheaper. <laughs> they also do it, and I'm going to put a, a plug in for Victoria. They do it in butchered gardens and most, you know. But they don't, I don't think, have the same quality of, of device. I think this one's much better than Disneyland does. <laughs> How many people here are carpenters? Even a do-it-yourself weekend carpenter? How many problems do you have with keeping your pencil sharpened? Quite a bit? No? no? Here's a device, and it's a little yellow device, not the other one. You stick on the end of your, your drill, and it sharpens your pencils. Let's see, most people in here, and those people are vain enough who've got them on anyway, need glasses. This is an automatic, auto-focusing pair of glasses. I'm not quite sure why would one, one want those, but uh, the next one in the glasses area, this is a pair of glasses that are classified as smart spectacles, Bluetooth controlled or whatever, and the lenses actually turn into transparent uh, screens. So you can watch, it's more in the gaming device uh, market than anything else. Um, I suggested this to my wife and she didn't quite agree with it, so that was the end of that one. The next one is something I think every woman in the world loves, and in particular, those that have problems putting on makeup. Here is a digital camera that automatically puts makeup on you. If it doesn't like the pre-prescribed makeup that you've got on, it will add it. This is by Panasonic. You notice the Lumix line? This is the best that you can get. It will add makeup, darken the skin, the eyes, lighten them up, do all the right things for you. How it does it, don't ask. How many people have pets here? Pets? And how often do you worry about Fido getting his food on time? <coughs> automatic dog feeder. Why one would want an automatic dog feeder? Because part of the whole thing is you've got dogs, you're supposed to feed them on a regular basis. Get cats, they're self-contained. Uh, the next one is how many people who have got animals have got two dogs? Okay, here you go. Automatic dual leash for it. Next question, I think I asked this one, but I'll ask it again. How many people have kids here? How many people, when those kids were yay high on a hot summer's day, said, hey, I want a popsicle? And you said, okay, let's do a work, make work project. We'll make popsicles. So you get the juices out and you do all that kind of stuff. You put it in the freezer and next day you can have a popsicle. Here's a unit that will make it in 10 minutes. The only criteria is, is this one's a bit washed out is this unit here has to be left in the fridge overnight, or the freezer, basically. And you can make up to, I think it's 20 uh, popsicles in one cycle. How many people here have ever played with a Frisbee? Okay, they're out. This is now a high, well-designed Frisbee unit. Um, apparently will outthrow, outmaneuver any Frisbee on the market. The next uh, area of technology that's being destroyed is the postage area. In um, Denmark, they're actually going where you call or go to an, uh, a site, you put a number on your parket, uh, package, and that is your tracking number, that is your, the whole works, and that's your postage, you prepay for that number. The stamp is out. Now I'm having a little problem if you look really closely, right at this top corner, you actually see the stamp on there. So, not sure how legit this is, but apparently it is uh, quite true. Next question, you do or don't want, have to answer this one. How many people here have got tattoos? Okay. This machine, you can oh, self-administer. <laughs> now I would have, I'm not a, I have a very low pain threshold, but this would scare the heebie-jeebies out of me. To stick your arm out of a machine that's gonna bore holes and put ink and whatever? No, thank you. My daughter thought it was kind of cute. That's not the scary Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> How many people are into recycling and using recycled water bottles and whatever? Yes, yes, okay. Here's one, one of the problems you have with water bottles is you gotta keep them clean, or you should anyway. 
Mine keep clean until I lose them, and then I get another one. This is a unit that unscrews. You can clean it, put it in the dishwasher, and away you go. I think this one makes sense. Don't know what the price on that one is, but uh, it definitely made sense to me. With my luck, I would lose it within the first day I'd used it. And then the person who found it would say, this is strange, and toss it in the garbage. Next one is we're all AV managers. We're always looking for equipment that a faculty member says, oh, I left it in the classroom, oh, I left it here, and whatever. Next section is on tracking devices. The first one I'm looking at is this is what they call a senior citizen smartphone. I like it. It's only got one button on it. My uh, Blackberry is going into withdrawal. I turned it off. I have no idea how to turn it back on again, but I turned it off the other day. Next one is a whistle key finder. Now, you see it connected to keys, but can you imagine connecting it to an AV cart, to a projector or whatever? Makes a lot of sense. All you do is you walk down the hall whistling. Suddenly, you'll hear the device go off. This one, I think, would make uh, our people go totally mad, but I think it would make sense. A little teddy bear you connect on to things. It'll find it. And yes, I did change this one to AV Tech. Sorry. It says on the original copy, it said Mom, mummy or whatever. Next one is a little more expensive, but apparently extremely good. And this will go through GPS tracking units. And this is called the James Bond type tracking device. Again, tie it to your machine. You'll be able to track it anywhere in the world if you remember what the GPS coordinates and da-da-da-da-da are all about. Cheaper people, let's try and track down one like your suitcase has. Ties onto your suitcase, you push the button, it'll tell you where your suitcase is. Same concept, tie it to a projector and away you go. The next category of things is called, you've got to be kidding. Remember, I did not make these up. These are actual devices that are on the web. This is a breastfeeding doll. The daughter puts the, uh, bre or the child puts a uh, simulated breast on. The baby sucks on the breast. Not quite sure. The next one I think every AV person needs, you like this one, don't you? <laughs> is a do-it-yourself flamethrower. <laughs> You know, I think this is something we all need, you know. The next one is for those people that are follically challenged or want to look like you are. This is a shaving helmet. Uh, this one, I've got a second slide. It shows the actual device inside. Here's the shaving devices that go back and forth across your head. I'm sorry, I, this one doesn't appeal to me whatsoever. <laughs> People in the room probably have all have children, have grandchildren or whatever, and during the gestation period, you wanted to know what the baby was going to look like, right? There is now a device that you can do that. Yes, my comment exactly. <laughs> ah, let's move on to this one. The next one is a device. One partner puts a device on his tongue or her tongue, and it's a little magnet. The other partner has a device around their face. The harder you kiss, the more your tongue moves around or whatever, will control the bowling ball down the aisle. On a video game, is that what that is? Uh, no, it's apparently, it's, a, it's not a game. It's a real device that bowls. Yeah. How many people here either have contact or have an alarm system at their home or in your office? Most people have. This next device, I think, is ideal. It's a burglar alarm system with pepper spray. <laughs> My only problem with this is how many times have you triggered off the alarm system yourself? Yeah. Enough said on that one. Another Japanese device is a electric nose lifter, something we all need to have. What it does is actually hooks into your nostrils pulls the nose up and then stimulates it with a bit of vibration. Apparently, they believe that this actually changes the growth pattern in the bone in your nose. Um, we'll move on. What about a UFO detector? Something we all need. I'd like to change that to like a director, a media manager, director, that kind of stuff. So. Next one is a crystal lipstick mouse. This has got bling on it. Nice little bits of glass and or um, diamonds. For those people that are concerned about mice 
and don't like moving it all over the place. I could see this for a handicapped person, but this is not designed for a handicapped. This is designed for every day. This is a head mouse. Hooks up on your head. You control everything on your mouse movements by head control. Those people are into iPods, and you, your current one just isn't big enough, large enough, or expensive enough. An $18,000 iPod. This has got real diamonds around it. Plus, it's a watch. I was going to put it in the other section, but I didn't think I'd get off on it. The next one is a $27,000 mouse. Again, with real crystals, real uh, diamonds in it. Next item is a, ch a child's toy, I think. But here's where a language barrier happens. This one comes out of Denmark, and it's <laughs> called pee and poo. It has a different t uh, term in Denmark, but it's to help children learn how to potty train. My 24-year-old saw this and says, I want one of those, and I'm saying, you're a little old. <laughs> Next one of the technologies that are really kind of strange is the, um, a robot vacuum, which everybody, of course, has nowadays in their home, with a camera built into it. Why? So you see where the, cam where the, you know, the uh, vacuum is? The next toy, I think, is just ideal. If I ever have grandchildren, which probably after my children find out about this, I'll never have, is a toy taser. <laughs> and this, according to the description, actually works. Don't ask me why we have this. Lego, which is a great company, I think, has now got, or you can now buy a Lego gun book. And believe it or not, the, the pack, or this a catalog comes with instructions for how many guns is it? Five guns. Just what we all need. How many people here have or are uh, having some problems walking, whatever, or have uh, parents or elderly people in their family? They normally don't like to be on an unstable environment, right? This one is a pair of roller skates that are supposed to help seniors walk better. Now, any senior I know, including myself, and I'm not a senior yet, is going to say, I can tell you where I can shove that. I'm not putting those on my feet. What about those people who have an iPhone who want it to look like a camera. It already is a camera. Why would you want a case to make it look like a camera? OK, projectors and LCD units. Now, here we go back to the analog. When I started in the industry, most of these projectors were all current models. Not all of them. The Bell & Hull uh, 16 wasn't quite current, but it wasn't far from it. All of these units, and does everybody know what these all devices do? I think most people do. 1949 is when the first three-tube projector came out. RCA unit, this is what it looked like. The, the lamps lasted, I think, about 30 hours or something. When I started in the industry and they first came down to an industrial educational market size, these were the ones that are around, and they were between eight and $10,000 each. Bill's shaking his head saying, yep, yep, yep. Each one of these, for those who didn't know, different colors, you had to set it up into a room and you had to line each one up horizontally and vertically until they all matched nice pretty colors and whatever. If you, yep, that took about an hour per machine to do. So conferences like this, you bolted that set down and you said, if anybody moves it, I'll kill you. <laughs> Trust me, I remember that. Today, this is the projectors we have. This is basically what they call a Pico projector. And the Pico projectors are now on the market. And I have a large one here. I want this back because my vendor will not allow me to, uh, to keep it. They come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes. There's one you've got a rough idea of what size it is. This is a USB driven one. You don't need any external power supplies for this one. This one's the same size as an iPod, 100 watt output. If you turned all the lights off other than these four square lights, most of these projectors will work. And this one actually works in a semi-dim room. 
boardroom that you can control the lights. But it's a nice little unit, easy to hook up. That one is about uh, 450 Canadian, which is about 480 uh, US right now. Hey, our Canadian dollar is stronger than yours is. One the same size as an iPhone, actually a combination iPhone unit. There's the RCA model, about $350. You've got to remember these are not bright projectors whatsoever, but they're very convenient. That one that's going around, uh, about a five second startup time, it does not get hot. It, you know, a little bit of warmth, but not a whole lot. This one here is one that's driven off your iP iPad and the power it gets from your iPad also. Combination of the whole works. Contrasting to that is a 92 inch 3D cinema TV. What everybody wants. One about the same size as the screen, if not a little bigger. Don't ask me how much it is. I'm still not sure about 3D technology yet. AV, AV devices. Now one of the things I wanted to bring up to you guys is, I didn't bring these up and these aren't items that have been on the market for years and years and years. Some of them may have. Most of these are within the last six months they've come onto the market. In particular, two 3D cameras. The JVC came in in March, available to the consumers. This one came in on market just on last Friday, Thursday, Friday, April uh, the 8th. So we're not talking stuff that's been on the market for years. They're coming down and they're there. This is one that I think everybody needs is an 18 zoom lens for their iPhone. Or their, not your iPhone, this is your uh, Android phone. And the next one was a 6 one for your iPhone itself. Again, what every camera needs. I mean, can you imagine holding that stable? How do you, you know, which reminds me on the projector that's going around, it's got a camera mount on the bottom so you can put it on a tripod. Very handy for, uh, yeah, very handy little. Yep. I'm, I, as I say, I'm not quite sure why one would want them, but because I've never been impressed with the pimp picture off of iPhones or whatever. What about one of these devices that your headphone, high definition camera for your helmet cam? I've got one of my technicians who is a motorcyclist. He loves these things, and he loves showing us the video from it. And the videos are terrible because they're bouncing all over the place and they get kind of sick. Next one is scanners. A scanner that looks like a book. You can take that into the library, scan your stuff, away you go. Yeah, I kind of like that one. I really do. The next one is a wireless scanner. This one's by Visioneer and they've been around for quite a while. It uh, basically downloads to an SD card or to a USB drive. No wires between it and your computer. You pull it out, you dump it into your computer, away you go. How many people have been driving home or you get home and you suddenly discover your iPod, whatever machine needs power and you can't fi find the power adapter? Here's one that's almost a universal, 110, 12, and you can plug in any one of your USB devices. I just hope with this that when you plug this into your car that it kills the uh, 110 output. And imagine that could give you one a shot. In the same lines of wireless devices, this one is an oxymoron. It's called a wireless charging pad. Okay? Now, why would one want this whole extra device on that when you can just plug that into there? I know it's easy, you can just drop your phone onto it, but again, I'm not quite sure. The next one I think actually is quite a, a good idea, USB rechargeable batteries. Okay, another item to tie into USB devices which we'll look into in a few minutes. Or for those people who've got hordes of the, the old batteries, this company actually puts life back into your old batteries. I'm not sure how reliable it is, so I've heard great warnings do not recharge and all the rest of it, but obviously they might work. Next is, we're going into an audio line of things here. Women love to have shoes. I'm sorry, I'm being sexist here. Speakers for the shoes. Not to be outdone, sneakers, speakers. 
How many, we, in the last session where I was in, where I was just next door here, we were talking about transferring VHS onto digital and whatever. Won't talk about the copyright. But here's a nice little device that you can plug into your USB port. It's got audio and video connectors on it. And that one actually has got a um, S connector on it. So you can connect out of one device, go into your machine, and you don't have to have multiple different units and whatever. Next level of technology that I'm, this is a warning device more than anything else. We've all heard about the, the bad things about incandescent lights, right? The next technology level is the LED lights or the, um, the fluorescent lights, compact fluorescence. One warning I'll give you right now. Compact fluorescence cannot go in enclosures like this. They will blow out on you. Okay, see the little pot lights? Don't put compact fluorescence in those things. They need a fair amount of heat. The other problem with the LEDs and the compact fluorescence, they have mercury in them. They don't tell you that. They're supposed to be disposed of in a proper system and whatever. I'm still wondering why we're being forced, in Canada anyway, to get rid of the incandescence and go um, the compact fluorescence and or LEDs. They've got to do something there. What about customize your ear uh, uh, buds? These ones, pair headphones, plug it in, and it will mold to the inside of your ear. Kind of like the idea, but I'm not sure whether or not it makes a lot of sense. For those people who have got the ear pods or the um, ear, um, iPod things, pair of speakers that connect onto the end. This is actually your unit here. Basically amplifies your, um, your earphone and your music. What about a light that's a speaker light combination? I kind of like this idea. You can have uh, your music just about anywhere in your house. Next one is one that's been around, the technology's been around a long time. Probably can't see it. This is a tunnel or funnel unit. Connects up onto the speaker of your iPhone. My daughter wanted me to put this one in. She has a duck collection. A floating wireless speaker in a duck. I'm going to go back to analog here. This is an analog talking tape. This tape is basically has got ridges on it like the old gramophone records and uh, vinyls used to have. You pull it through the, the, um, the card and it gives a message. Quite often used in Hallmark cards about 10, 15 years ago, believe it or not. Sony's come out with a retro radio, which I kind of like. I, I quite like this model. AM, FM, and several other different features on it. What about a multimedia uh, radio? Basically a combination um, TV, media player, the whole works in one. For those people who cannot stick to their desks, a wrist computer. Should I added all the wrist units together? The next one is, how many people have ever been in a group like this where you're trying to get a picture of everybody, including yourself? You set the 10 second timer, you go back and you miss it. This one will run on your Android phone. Android, all you need to do is set it up and away you go. My daughter has got a, phone, a, a camera that will not take a picture until you smile. Really quite scary. For those people that are doing, and the, there was a session a little while ago, about capturing devices and whatever for a classroom. Live streaming, this will take just about any camcorder. Connect it on and it will uh, do live streaming for you. If you're concerned about people seeing you, what about a miniature HD camera? This will fit in your pocket and you can see the images you're getting off of. I'm not that impressed with it. So, Transportation devices is the next one. This is devices that I've seen out there that will do all sorts of transport vehicles and whatever. Inflatable roof rack. I like this idea when I go to Rona or uh, Home Depot, I need a sheet of plywood and just blow it up, put it on top of my car and away I go. Um, the next one is not supposed to be there. Yes, it is. Okay, this is a drive with your mind. Now, I'm going to see if I can get this one to work because it's a short little video.
My only concern is, well, yeah. The other one is, what happens if you're having an argument with somebody? What happens if your mind drifts? Uh, you know, I see this as, mind you, in Vancouver, maybe it would be better that we have more of these units. Way better. Victoria, forget it. What about a remote control for your car connected to your smartphone? The next one is a combination of skateboard and uh, bicycle. A little interesting on this one. The, um, the Segway has been around for a while. Whoops, I can see another error on my presentation. This is a one unicycle Segway unit, and apparently very uh, efficient, very fun to play with. Those people who are into bicycles, oops, now we're going to confuse the machine. There you go. USB device generator. I think this is a home built unit, but generator that will charge a USB devices while you're uh, biking home or wherever. What about a motorized skateboard? Uh, this is an interesting idea. I'm a little afraid of this one, but these ones will do off-roading. Yeah. You know, can you imagine what this is going to end up being like? Next one is, I think, a neat uh, feature. What about an illuminated skateboard? Or, next one is a jetpack and skis make going uphill fast. Can you imagine what going downhill would end up being like? And there's also a video attached to this, which is really scary. Next one is a bicycle that will convert into a shopping cart. Not a lot of space left for the shopping cart, but it's there. Next one is not a toy. It's an actual electric uh, bike made by Swiss Army. <laughs> nice little device. Next one I thought was a bit scary, but it is a device that, now according to the description, is powered by two screwdrivers. In this particular case, the screwdriver is not the type that you use to screw in the wall. It's a type of gear-driven unit. Next one is a high-end um, bicycle. We're talking, I think this one was about eight to $10,000, if not more. Not to be outdone was this one, which is made by Audi, and it's a hardwood one. I kind of like this one, but of course it was much more expensive. The next one I think Starbucks has to look at here is a bike rack for your bike. The new drive-in concept, <laughs> you drive up to it, you can get your coffee and whatever, and away you go. You can turn into a desk at the same time. Your postal carrier people would love this little delivery trike. They stand on the back, they've got room for the front, away you go. Now this one is a concept machine. I'd like to have one of these, but they're saying it's still in concept. Uh, unit, submarine, ATV type combination unit. Last not least in this group is Peugeot making a trike. Now this is called a trike. I don't know if it's classified as that because it's got three wheels or if it's for kids. But if kids have got one of these, I want to be a kid again. And Sheldon would love to have the next one, which is a robot which can take and you can go to work with. Remember, did anybody catch that one on Big Bang? Sheldon would love one of these. In the trike area, remember the big wheel trikes? Well, not to be outdone, they've added a Harley motor to it. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a real big one. Next one in the motorcycle area is a compressed air driven motorcycle. I'm not sure if you go up to the gas station, get filled up with compressed air on this one or not but it does have a built-in air compressor on it. USB devices, hubs and whatever. This is those people who love to go into your regular Facebooks and whatever fast. A keyboard that's got them all set up as buttons. Next one is, and I'm not sure why one would want one of these, is a USB cigarette lighter. Or a USB aquarium, an organizer. Now, to me, okay, nice trick, whatever, but they forgot to put in, and I would have put in some USB ports on it. Would have made sense for me. This one's one I like because I do some artwork and whatever, is an electronic brush for your notepads. Cam uh, webcams, you raise the little guy's arms up, he's blacked out, lower, you can see what he's doing. Now the next one came out about 
six months ago, I think, not even that. I've got March 17th is when it came on the air. A six terabyte Western Digital hard drive, USB driven. I don't know if that's USB 2 or 3. I'm hoping it's 3. In the hubs, this has kind of put some people off, but it's out there. The tugboat people, there's a USB device for your tugboat. The next one is a card reader USB in a submarine, but for some reason it doesn't come in yellow. I have no idea why. Next one I quite like because this laptop and my uh, desktop at work are USB 3 compatible. This is a 12-port USB device or hub. Half of the ports are USB 3, the other half are 2. The only thing is you've got to remember which one's which. For those people that are into cows and uh, whatever, 4-port USB cow. Now the next one is by Lego or uh, modeled after the Lego parts is a four port hub. My question is why they didn't design it in such a way as when you stack one on top of each other that it basically transfers through. You still got to wire it one from the other so you lose one of the ports. What about a robot USB hub? Next one is one that I think we all need is a wind up USB um, robot hub. When you get tired of or when you got nothing else to do, you pull it up, you wind it, and it moves all over your desk for you. Not sure if that's wired or not. Another Lego device is a USB Lego uh, unit. Now with camping and uh, not as much camping, but uh, back outdoor um, barbecuing in that, what about a USB LP gas 3 MP3 player and portable speakers? I'm not quite sure how big this is, but it, this looks like a USB device, so they're not going to be that big. What about USB memory? Okay. <coughs> How many people have a problem like I have when I pull out a memory stick and you try and put it inside of your computer or on your hub or whatever and you never get it right direction? Yes? USB hubs that have the um, contacts on both the top and bottom. I think this is, should be a no-brainer, but not always guaranteed. Next is a uh, USB concept watch. I'm not sure where the watch part of this is, but it's also an MP3 player combination. Next one I thought was kind of neat. This is on USB devices on cards. You buy it as a section, you break it off, you write it on your information, away you go. Relatively inexpensive. Or the um, next one is the uh, verbatim ones, which are actually like a post-it note that you can clip onto your page. For those people who make mistakes, an eraser. What about glow-in-the-dark ones? Now this one I discovered was a repeat from last year, so I apologize for anybody who saw it last year. A USB handgun. No idea why one would want that, but it's there. Next one is what they call a mosquito, which is a USB device, ultra small, which is close to this size. What are the chances of losing that? Yeah, that's my comment too. So I can imagine how easy it would be to lose a mosquito. USB luggage units. For those people that are Doc Martin fans, Doc Martin boots in USB devices. I'm not sure why they call this one a uh, USB drive in disguise. I mean, I can see it. It's not that much disguise on that one. For the Mac people, USB drive with the words Mac on it, the old keys. Next one who've got systems like this, which I have, but I don't have my keys connected to it right now, is a light, your key, and your USB device all in one. So if you lose your keys, you lose your memory stick, you lose whatever. The next one is a 32 gig hard drive. Can you imagine losing one of those when it's filled with information? Those people, sorry? Yeah. <laughs> what about a uh, uh, mailbox? We don't use our mailboxes anymore. The next one is I think something that everyone, every guy in this room 
needs are USB cufflinks. How often do you need a cufflink USB device? Sorry? Yeah, James Bond possibly. Um, what about this, uh, a couple for the uh, steampunk people? This is a waterproof one and another waterproof one. Kind of interesting devices they've got here. Next one is uh, the flash memory card drives in dollars. I have no idea how much this one is, but I can imagine it would not be too cheap. What about something like a shiny whistle drive? Robots again. Hello Kitty. And not to be outdone is also Victronics has introduced one that, uh, again, Victronics are the same people that are Swiss Army Knights. And last but not least, and I made it within 49 minutes, that's not bad, is uh, the resources. These are just a sample of where I get these things from. The ones that I pick up most of mine is our daily feed of gadgets and cool gadgets. Those two I get daily feeds on. Most of it are drive driven on either cell phone or computer technology, but there's all sorts of things that come up and you say, what? And these ones were all collected within the last four to six months. So it's not that I've done a whole lot of digging to find them. Questions? As I say, 50 minutes. What do you do in your spare time? When you're not looking this, actually, every now and then I send these to my wife and my kids and that, and they said, you got too much time on your hands. The thing is, they just come there, it's copy and paste and send it out. And I think they're an interesting little thing. But I enjoy them. I'm not a gadgets person whatsoever, but I enjoy seeing them and saying, hey, this looks interesting, um, whatever. I think it also adds a little bit of humor to the office place. We don't have enough of it around. Any questions? As I say, on the, um, on the website, I'll have the 2010 and the 2011. The 2010 has got um, different ones that I collected from last year compared to the 2011 ones. Thank you. That's it. How many times have you been in a presentation with it?